you'll need to use the Create New Design from File and select the Rails Support Fusion Archive file. Once the file is open, save it to your project. With the model open in Fusion 360, you can see that there are some additional components, a screw and a cap. These two components are not going to be valuable in the analysis process. We'll start the analysis process by switching to the simulation workspace. When switching to the workspace, you'll need to select the type of study you'll be running. In this case, select Static Stress, and then pick Create Study. With the type of study selected, you can then go to the Simplify workspace, expand the model components, find the screw and the cap, and delete them from the simulation model, leaving only the rail support. When this is done, you can select Finish Simplify. This will return you back to the simulation workspace, where you can go under Materials and select Study Materials. The model was created with the default steel material. You can use the pull-down to switch the material to aluminum. This device will be held in place by the screw pressing it up against a wall, so the friction with the wall will be the primary support. Under the Constraints pull-down, select Structural Constraints, and then once the dialog opens, you'll leave the type as fixed, and then select the back rim of the rail support. With that selected, now it's time to place the load. Under the Loads pull-down, there are several different load types. In this case, you'll use a structural load, and you use a force. You'll then select the face that will rest on the underside of a handrail, change the units to pounds of force, and set the value at 20. We'll also account for the angle that this device will be setting on the wall. We'll go to the angle delta, and use the manipulators to reorient the load. Looking at the front, we'll change the load to minus 10 degrees. And then at the side, we'll set the angle to 5 degrees. There's now only one component, so we don't need to use contacts, but we can still check the degrees of freedom using the icon on the display tab. When the model displays green, it means that everything is held in place. We can also see the status and the pre-check in the Solve panel. Selecting Solve, you might be offered an opportunity to run the analysis on the cloud, but choose the local solution and solve the study. After a few moments, the results will display. The goal for this design is to have a safety factor of 5 or greater. This initial study shows that we're just under 5. You can see where the stress concentration is, and this is a fairly thin body that goes up to the resting pad. To experiment with a potential solution, return to the Simplify workspace. In the Simplify workspace, you can choose the type of feature to be removed from the list, and use the Feature Size bar to select the features. Or, as you should do in this case, use the Manual Features selection and pick the two small fillets on the inside of the U-shape. Once they're selected, choose the Delete icon at the bottom of the dialog. One possible solution for this model is to thicken this U-shaped form. To make the modification, I'm going to change the units because I'm used to thinking in inches. So I'll change the standard units to inch, and then start the Press Pull tool from the Marking menu. I'll select all the faces on the inside of the U-shape all the way up to the underside of the resting pad. Once I have all nine faces selected, I'll start dragging in the size of this, and then entering a value of 50 thousandths of an inch. Then start the Fillet tool, and add fillets back where they were. In this case, use a radius of 0.1. With the model edits made, we'll go back and rerun the solution.
After a few moments, we see that this new option comes in with a safety factor of 6.27. Now we can choose whether to do more experimentation with potential solutions or go back to the model and make the changes that were made in the Simplify workspace.